Welcome back everyone. So before getting started, make sure you update your Adobe XD to the latest version because we need the latest update to create such kind of an animation. So without any further ado, let's see what we're gonna create today. So the first one is the signature kind of an animation. And the second one is a simple logo animation like this. And the third one is a scribbling kind of an animation, which you see in whiteboard animations and all. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is type in my channel name and align it to the center and then choose a script font like this. So this works good. And next I'll make it a path so that I can add a gradient color to this. So I'll just add in my branding colors here. And that looks good. So next we gotta do is trace the path here using the vector tool. So make sure you do from the end to the starting. That is from the right to the left. I'll let you know why I'm doing this. But as of now, just use the pen tool and start tracing it. And as you can see, I'm not doing a very neat job here. You just have to trace it out roughly but make sure that your path is over these characters itself. So our first word is done. So let's continue with the second word. I'll just click somewhere here and you can just continue. So there we go, it's done. And all you gotta do is just select the path and increase the thickness to something around 20. So don't make the value too high or too low. Something in between should work well. And the next thing you gotta do is just zoom in and check if your path is covering the whole gradient text behind this. So just scroll through and as you can see a bit of text is being left out here. You can either increase the thickness a bit or just edit the path and adjust it so that it covers the gradient there. So as you can see the gradient there is covered and just quickly go through the different areas here and just fix those minor issues. So here it's being left out, so I'll just increase this. So there we go, that is done. So the next thing you gotta do is adjust the dash and the gap value. So this is the core part of this process. So to explain you that, I'll just take a small line here, give the width as 500 and increase the thickness so that it's visible. So as you keep increasing the dash value, you can notice that the gap also increases. So you basically gotta increase the dash value here and make sure that the first dash here fills the whole path or the whole line. And that basically happens when you give the width as the dash value. So when I give it as 500, you can see the full line is filled. And if I try to reduce it, you can see the first dash is being reduced. So at 500, it basically fills the whole path. So we gotta do the same thing for this also. So since this is a huge path, I'll directly start from 1000 here. So that didn't fill, 2000, 3000 also didn't work out. So 35, almost there. So then I'll use the shift and the up arrow key just to fill the whole thing. And as you can see, almost at 4,250, we have reached the whole path with the first dash. Next thing, just copy this and paste it in the gap value also. So there you go, the first part is done. All you gotta do is just change the border color to the background color, which is white in my case. And your first state of the artboard is done. Just duplicate it and select the path and give the dash value as zero. So that's it, your states are done. All you gotta do is just prototype this one. So I go to the prototype tab here and then select the first artboard, link it to the next one. And we gotta choose auto animate for it to work and maybe increase the duration to something like three seconds so that we can see the complete animation properly. And then you can change the easing options. So on tap, everything looks good. So I go for preview and I tap and there you go. You have this cool signature animation with an Adobe XD. You can also play around with the easing option to make this look more better. Maybe try linear, that is none. So that was the signature animation. Now let's quickly duplicate this artboard here and bring in the SVG version of our channel logo. And I'll align it to the center and ungroup all these objects here. So as you can see, we have two lines creating the logo here. So we gotta trace this from the right to the left, that is from the end to the beginning. And then only we'll have this animation which will start from the beginning to the end. So I'll just start tracing this from the end for one line here and a new path for the second line and then increase the thickness value so that the whole logo behind is covered with this path. Then select each of this path and same like we did before, find the dash value that fills the whole path and then paste it in the gap value. That's it, we are done. And here if you want these alphabets to come one after the other, you can follow a cursive path like we did before. But if you want each of these characters to come parallelly, you have to trace out these separately. So as you can see, I'm tracing out the alphabet D here. So just trace it out from the opposite direction as I told you. So there you go, that is done. And now I'll again add a new path, again from the end. 
and just repeat this separately for each of these characters. So I'm just speeding up this process. And there you go, we are done. The next steps are pretty similar. You gotta select all your path and increase the thickness and find out the perfect value that fills in all the logo behind it. And then just zoom in and find any mistakes there, which you can just cover up by editing the path. So everything looks good. And then for each of these paths, you gotta find the dash value that fills up the whole path. And then just copy that to the gap value and repeat the same process for all these alphabets here. So there you go, that is done. All you gotta do is change the border color to match the background color, which is white here. And then duplicate your artboard, select all the path and change the dash value to zero. That will reveal the logo behind it. And that's it, all we are left to do is prototype it. So I'll link it to the next artboard. So we have the same settings as before. So I'll directly go and preview it. And I tap here and there you go. We have this cool animation, but it is too slow because it is the same settings as before, which is too long. So just play around with the timings and adjust it to your liking. So quickly moving on to the third one, I'll just duplicate an artboard here. So this is a line kind of a logo, so it's easy for this. But if you have a detailed logo, like a mascot logo or an image, uh, it's kind of difficult. So let's see what we can do with this. So I'll just copy this mascot. I'm really not sure whose logo is this, but let's use it for this tutorial purpose. So I'm just trying to match the background color and adjusting the logo to the center. So the next thing we got to do is draw the path. So we'll just follow a zigzag motion here, just like you're scribbling with a pen in a zigzag manner. And that will slowly reveal the logo in this pattern. So there you go, we have the path. We can do this in a detailed manner, like drawing the shield here and then drawing the logo one by one, but that's gonna get too detailed. But to do something simple here, just draw a zigzag path, increase the thickness and follow the same thing. Find the dash value and then copy the dash value to the gap value. And that should finish our first step. Then simply select the path and match it to the background color. Next thing is just duplicate the artboard, choose the path and make the dash value as zero. That's it. All we are left with is do the prototyping. Just click on the first artboard, go to prototype tab, link it to the next one. And let's change the duration or let's keep it at three, but let's change the easing to maybe ease and ease out. And let's try this one. So I click on preview, I tap, and there you go. We have this cool animation of scribbling. And if you noticed, it started from the bottom to the top. That is because we created the path from the top to the left. So that is the reason I told you, you gotta do it from the opposite direction. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you found this informative and helpful. A quick note here, thanks for all the love and support that you've shown us on YouTube. And we have just recently started our Instagram page. And as you can see here, we are posting some really interesting and informative design bites. So make sure that you follow us there so that you don't miss out these content. And as always, thanks for watching.